from Japan. And uh, the first topic by, no, 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 uh, Tawi, first topic, Tawisak and Skip. And uh, he's very, very busy. So the first topic. And the uh, second one is my, uh, is my talk. And we have only two presentation. So don't hesitate to discuss and ask uh, the topic and topics. So at first, in the first topic is the surgery for valvular atrial fibrillation. How to maximize successful result. Uh, Professor Chosaku, am I right? Yeah. Uh, for the coxmase procedure, that is the surgery for atrial fibrillation. Uh, the gold standard is coxmase procedure introduced by Professor James Cox, and his part, his technique is look like. Um, you have the handkerchief and you cut it by the scissor and you saw, saw it back like this one. It looks like the, uh, this, this one. Frankenstein. <laughs> and his result is very impressive. Look at his long-term result. At 15 years, 97% success rate. And what about the other center, Mayo Clinic experience, that similar technique, cut and saw, look at the result at 10 years, it's just 50%. How about other center for the cut and saw maze, uh, that I review from uh, other six, four paper, the successful rate is about 80%. So the factor that influence to the success of the mass positive, the first one is the duration of pre AFib. Look at this paper from the James Cox again. Uh, if the patient has the long history of AFib, 20 year compared to 15 year, 10 year, five year, and one year, significant different outcome, p -value. This is the study from Mark Girinov, and oh no, uh, this is another paper from Japan by Dr. Kosakai. Uh, modify cut and saw maze. Look at his result. When the size of the atrium, small size compared to big size, the success rate dropped significantly. And this is the meta-analysis regarding to the side of the left atrium. And uh, from this study, they conclude that the significant magic number is the six centimeter in diameter of the left atrium. Where is the second one? Uh, the third one is associated with other wild disease. The fourth one, rheumatic heart disease the age of the patient, and the type of AFib. Look at the, here. This is a major clinic experience. Uh, again, compare between paroxysmal AFib, this one, and uh, this one is a lone AFib. And the last one is a concomitant with metaval surgery. You can see that concomitant with metaval surgery, the result is uh, the worst one when compared to the other. Uh, uh, type of a fib. How to improve the outcome of the mass positive? Look at this paper uh, from Mark Gilinov. Uh, he performed the lesion set. The first number one, number two, number three, number four. What about the outcome for the lesion set number three and number four? The result will close to the cut and saw mass. And this is a paper from uh, Lab Damino, 
who is the successor of the James Cook. Uh, he compared between uh, complete block region like this one, composed of the left pulmonary vein isolation, right pulmonary vein isolation. This line we call lower block ablation. This line we call mitral uh, ablation and connecting to the air appendage. And he compared between upper block region with or without. And his result is here. Uh, this one, uh, the, the blue one is a complete block region. The red one, he skipped for the upper block region. The long-term result, look at here, significant difference with block region, much better than without block region. Uh, this one with anti arrhythmic duct, and with this one without anti arrhythmic duct. And from the Society of Thoracic Surgeons of America uh, guideline in uh, 2017 is also the pet, uh, lesion set as James uh, Lab Damino complete block lesion. This one is for the left side, and this one for the right side, composed of SVC line, IVC line, from the air appendage to the uh, uh, annulus of dicastic valve, from the air appendage to the very close to the incision, uh, and this one from the one o'clock of the uh, dicastic annulus up to the incision. This is a recommendation by uh, Society of Thoracic Surgeons. And how to uh, fix the problem of the giant left atrium? Look at this paper from uh, Japan, a Komeda group. He performed the pication from the air appendage and then uh, allow the posterior part of the mitral annulus and allow this area, he used the cryo ablation allow the picated area. And his result, very really impressive. Another paper from China, uh, pication between uh, pulmonary vein isolation of the left and right side. Look at the outcome one year later, Compare between preoperative left atrium size smaller than 75 mil compared to bigger than 75 mil. Look at uh, the size after that, no significant difference with this technique of pication. However, the result of freedom from AFib significant, much different. Freedom, this group, smaller than uh, 75 mil, freedom 90%. And uh, bigger than 75 mil, uh, just only 60%. What difference between this paper and COVID paper? This paper, they just pication, but they do not uh, make ablation allow the picated area. So it's still living tissue. So why? Uh, so is the reason why the outcome different? Not so good. This is another uh, uh, paper that pication at the left lateral wall of the loop of left suprapulmonary vein, and he also picated at the interatrial septum. I, I, uh, I use this technique for just only four or five cases, and I stop it because uh, when the left atrium is big, it means that the septum is very thin. So sometimes uh, the, uh, the suture line may be larger and we need the patch to cover it. So I stopped to do the uh, pication at the septum of the uh, interatrial septum. This is the technique introduced by Professor C. Boring from the University of Michigan to cut at the posterior wall of the left atrium. And uh, meta analysis regarding to the lepidium side. From this paper, they conclude that the evidence suggests that patient with a large, how big? Bigger than 55 millimeter lepidium 
at risk of failing to obtain Senate conversion after standard means. Uh, what, uh, what they mean? They mean that when the lepetium bigger than 55 millimeter, uh, you need to reduce the size of the lepetium. However, one paper reported no benefit of the reduction in the patient with lepetium size bigger than 70 mu. What about the alternative energy sources? Uh, at present, alternative energy sources are used in 92% uh, of the abrasion case and in 98% concomitant positive with other cardiac surgery. Cryoabrasion is safe in proximity to Cori vessel and valve without injury to the valve and Cori artery. Untersal and microwave have proved less effective and now not commercially available. This is uh, the picture of the alternative energy sources. This is a, a guideline for the surgical treatment for the AFIP uh, published in 2013 Mention to the energy sources uh, for the microwave is a class T recommendation. For the uh, Untersal is also class T recommendation. So it's the reason why both of these uh, energy sources withdraw from the market. This is for the uh, unipolar ablation is a class 2A recommendation to use. And, oh, sorry what happened. And for the bipolar, it's a class one recommendation uh, to use this. What about cryo-ablation? It's also class 2A recommendation. And uh, surgical ablation, uh, this is um, the, the paper published from Mayo Clinic compared between uh, classical cut and saw mesh. This one, the red line and the blue line is alternative energy sources. Look at the number of alternative energy sources, uh, much higher than cut and saw mesh. However, the result for the cut and saw mesh, this one, the black one, is better than alternative energy sources. So for my presentation, I can conclude that surgery for a FIP is uh, useful concomitant with other cardiac surgery. Alternative energy sources are easier than classical maze positive with similar result. Complete transmissibility and continuity are the most important. Duration of a FIP, size of the lepatium, type of a FIP are the factor uh, influence to the result of the uh, surgery for the AFib. Thank you. At first, then, uh, 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 Professor Joseph, and, uh, I'd like to first uh, ask you, what kind of energy do you, rec do you use now? Okay, Cryo? Uh, in my practice. Yeah. Okay, uh, in my unit, I use uh, eye vibration. Uh, early gated eye operation, uh, either monopolar or bipolar, and sometimes concomitant uh, as a combo. Uh -huh. And in my study, uh, compare between monopolar and bipolar. Bipolar, I mean that concomitant with cryo in, uh, at the mitral ishmat line, at the tichasid ishmat line, uh, in my study. Monopolar, better. <laughs> but, the, you know, sometimes it's very difficult to confirm the transmilarity yeah, that's, that, that's uh, the during point. the procedure. Yeah, that's yeah, the point. Am I right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh, some comment and some question. I think in, in Thailand it's quite difficult to, to search for the history of the patient about the, the, long, the, the presence of the AF, how long is, mm. it started. So sometimes I think it makes the result is uh, sometime questionable and the uh, second thing is that uh, uh, yeah so I uh, 
Maybe the second question is that when you do combination of uh, AF and valve surgery, do you think there is a difference between degenerative mitral valve disease and rheumatic disease? Is it dif different or, or not? And, and what should we focus on, especially in rheumatic, which is yeah. thicker and, uh, and, oh no, I forgot my third question is that I'm not know much about uh, e uh, cardiology unit who, who did some, some treatment of AF with some, some instrument to check. So I, the, my question is that sometimes I don't know that after surgical ablation, after we did whatsoever uh, like a box lesion or something, I'm not sure that what we did is enough or not. That in that that the uh, the pathway that we did is the mess was corrected or not. How can we check as a surgeon to see that the uh, the pathway that we did is enough to get rid of the AF surgery? Uh, for the first comment, I absolutely agree with you that uh, for the Thai patient, uh, maybe because uh, they are the education of the uh, poor people is not so good, they cannot say that uh, how long for the a fifth surgery, uh, how long for the a fifth uh, in 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 their life. So uh, we can get some information from the medical document, the first one. The second one, we can uh, indirect question to ask the patient that how long you take warfarin? Do, you know, do we know what is warfarin? The warfarin is the uh, medication that the patient every time they go to see the doctor and need the blood test. That is the uh, indirect question to ask the patient. For the second question, ask me again for the second one. About the degenerative valve surgery okay. and uh, uh, rheumatic, is it uh -huh. different? Uh, they have just only two papers that uh, mention for the uh, rheumatic patient is the risk factor that influence to the result. The first paper from Japan, and the study just only 29 cases, um, very few cases. Mm -hmm. And they, from that study, uh, in rheumatic, uh, the result not good. Another paper from, uh, from Korea, concomitant with rheumatic valve repair with AF surgery, is a, a influence factor to the result. But other paper that I review, uh, either from China, Brazil, Israel, no difference. And in my study, uh, when compared between rheumatic and degenerative, it's still no different. I didn't uh, show in, in my presentation. What is your third question? Third question how, how can we make sure that after we do surgery ablation, okay. It's, it's kill the patient. Okay. Right in, in <laughs> that is the point. <laughs> so, um, actually, you have the um, uh, device to check it. Uh, that is of etiquette. You When you perform the isolation of the uh, uh, Pomeranian isolation, you can check at you test by induce the, um, the trigger. And if the trigger can pass to your pass across your ablation. It means that it's incomplete. You can do uh, uh, again. But in my real practice, uh, either monopolar or bipolar, I perform at least four times. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. for, for the first two times at the same line, such as bipolar, when I cram it, and the first time, second time, I not release the cam. And for the third time, I release the cam and apply to an other point. Because maybe the thickness of the tissue may be different. And also, when I perform, I use the monopolar, I perform the same pattern. I, for the first two lie at the same line. And the third lie is different. And fourth lie may be the same as third lie or another different. And how I know that is complete or not, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> For the monopolar. I, I'm thinking about like Cody surgery, we should have the quality control. Mm -hmm. Like a Cody, we have the TTFM or something. AF surgery, as a surgeon, we should have something because cardiologists have, but we don't have. Mm. And I think that from the beginning, like a, we don't know the history of the AF and multiple risk factor. So 
I think that I think we should have a selection how to select the good candidate patient to do the AF surgery as a surgeon that we, we don't have right now. That's my comment. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I know there's a code. It's very difficult. Sometimes it's very difficult to decide how long HFE continue before surgery. It's very difficult, I guess. And, uh, and more than that, how do we decide the HFE restore to normal sinus rhythm? by uh, 24 hours uh, ECG monitoring, or how do you, when do you quit anticoagulation or antiarrhythmic drug or something? Uh, quite, you know, the at rest, uh, rest ECG, sinus rhythm, oh, that's okay? It's enough, or In just check the 24 hour halt, halt ECG or the long, much longer time ECG? Uh, How do you decide? Yeah, yeah. Uh, in my practice, uh, my protocol at six months, we perform the two things. The first thing, uh, echocardiogram to check the uh, valve repair successful or not. The second thing, we check the left atrial contraction. In my unit, we don't have the, uh, we cannot check the atrial transport function. We can check just the uh, left atrial contraction. This is, uh, and we can classify with good contraction, moderate contraction, and poor contraction. That is the, the first thing. The, the second thing uh, is we perform the whole monitor. And in my study, the case that is sinatritum is not 100% whole, uh, whole no AFib. It's just only 87%. Whole monitor proved no AFib in the group of sinatritum in my, in my study. Is there any question? No? Another no. question? <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, so just sec, in the, would you, would you sit here? Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, Teresa asked me to present my experience ring selection for much of our repair. So, what's any? And uh, as you know, Alan Carpentier developed new concept of much of our repair using a prosthetic ring, so-called ring aneloplasty, means annulus ring modeling. Ratio, the anteroposterior length and transverse length ratio, four to three. This is the, this word, the rigid ring. And 10 years after, you know, the so-called, the 10-year appraisal and 1983 so-called French correction, the analyst remodeling, the concept was dilatation affect the mural lifted and commissure area. Dilatation does not affect the attachment of the aortic lift. Aortic lift between, between, means between trigon and trigon does not dilate. Dilatation associated with the deformed deformation of the annulus and anteroposterior diameter is larger than transverse diameter. So therefore, we measure the, the trigon trigon or commissure commissure distance in at the, at the uh, size selection. Dilatation is an evolving process which should be controlled by stabilizing the, stabilizing the entire analyst, not by suturing, by putting the prosthetic ring. Here is the big famous figure at the French correction. So the, the aim of the uh, prosthetic ring analplasty at first one, restoration of 
unless shape and size, and increase leaflet captation, as you, as Tavisak mentioned before session, or end reduction stress, re reduction in stress on sutures, suture reduction suture technique, posterior leaflet. You know, it's a, a very very classical but reliable procedure even now. And the predictability and the immediate stability for valve repair. So then we can obtain the long term durability of mitral valve repair. This is the, uh, you know, the history of mitral valve repair almost 40 years. And this basic concept doesn't change even now. So then after Carlos Duran developed the flexible ring, you know, the 1976, and the uh, flexible ring, you know, the affects the good LV function. And Tyron David demonstrate the good function using the flexible ring afterwards, and the and uh, this is the Duran flexible band in experience like this. And I fortunately had a exp uh, had a opportunity to use this flexible ring, a band, a flexible ring at 1990 at first in Japan as a clinical uh, trial. And uh, at that time, my colleague, my uh, colleague, echocardiologist, uh, you know, they analyzed the mitral, mitral anus motion during the cardiac cycle. You know, the uh, drowning, mitral anus with the drowning change its shape and size during the cardiac cycle, physiologically. And the straight dotted line, you know, the uh, mitral anus with the semi-rigid carpentier ring. So, and I asked the echocardiologist, the, 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 the stress echocardiography, and rest exercise, rest exercise, and the you know, fraction shortening increased in flexible ring group, and also the peak velocity is lower than rigid one, and exercise, you know, the diastolic mean gradient across the mitral valve is better than rigid one. So, 1995, we, we, we concluded the mitral illness with a flexible ring is better in terms of LV, LV, contra, LV, fun, LV systolic function, diastolic function, and so I preferred uh, this type of ring for more than 20 years. And another, uh, my colleague, uh, Dr. Mawa, analyzed the 3D reconstruction, the mitral analysis with the so-called normal, normal subject, flexible ring, and a rigid ring. As you can see, the, the mitral anus, mitral anus with the flexible ring, the shape of the uh, systolic and systolic uh, so-called subtle shape, and, and then reduce its size and move to the apex like a uh, normal subject. The rigid ring just moved to the apex without reducing its size. It's, it's a very, very physiological, uh, is not the uh, prosthetic ring, I guess. So the uh, flexible, flexible ring or band is better early post, early post operative LV systolic function of a patient with a rigid ring. That's my, that's our conclusion. Allow analyze and configuration 
to adapt to change throughout the cardiac cycle? Yes. Better diastolic blood flow across the mitral valve, particularly during exercise. Flexi flexible amyloplasty re repair system uh, place less stress on the suture during systole and minimizing the likelihood of deficiency. Uh, fortunately, I didn't have uh, um, the AV, uh, dehiscence after ring implantation. And more, moreover, I didn't have a, a physiological score of mitral stenosis. You know, I didn't have. And uh, in general, adverse effects of a prosthetic ring, you can see at first, intravascular hemolysis, intravascular hemolysis. That depends on the uh, residual rotation after repair. And the hesions is very important to train, obtain the implantation technique. Functional stenosis, size selection, same also size selection is very important. And injury to coronary artery, needle size, I guess, you know, I use I use because of the uh, kinking to prevent the kinking implantation. You know, flexible ring. I used the uh, RB one eighteen millimeter needle. You know, as usual. I I didn't use twenty or twenty two uh, SH one or anyway larger needle. So this is the echo from the textbook. Here the Oh, sorry. Sorry. Back. Would you back the... Here you can see a prosthetic ring, a regurgitant jet impinging hit. Regurgitant jet hit the prosthetic ring like this. If the, uh, there is a regurgitant just like, the, just like this, I don't hesitate to change the ring implantation or uh, remove the prosthetic ring because to avoid the uh, intravascular hemolysis after uh, after repair. At the, at the very beginning era, in 1990s, I, I had uh, three or four cases developed the uh, intravascular hemolysis within a month. So I strictly control so-called the uh, regurgitant jet uh, impinging to the uh, prosthetic ring. And uh, this is a very, very unique 74-year-old female, functional class two and three, almost 20, oh, sorry, 1995, uh, he, she underwent mitral repair for anterior, leaf, anterior prolap prolapse using a Gore-Tex. And the ring size was a flexible ring, 27. And uh, 15 years after, he, she developed HFE. And tricuspid gorge also developed. So I reoperation underwent to restore the cardiac rhythm using a maze procedure and tricuspid angioplasty. At that time, mean gradient across the mitral valve was four millimeter of mercury. There's no mitral stenosis. And seven years after, there's she, 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 she was getting very symptomatic, and the mean gradient increased to 10 millimeter of mercury. This is the recent, you know, the no recursion, but the trans mitral gradient, uh, mean gradient 10 uh, increasing, and the stenotic, uh, functional stenotic, maybe, maybe. Uh, I don't know the mechanism, but there may be a uh, uh, ring and the so-called, I don't know, 
the unfortunately two and a half years ago, uh, uh, my condition, my own condition, uh, not so bad, so called the uh, other, uh, she underwent a third re operation, as, uh, you know, by using uh, prosthetic bioprosthesis. In this situation, it's very careful. They, they put on the so called 25 millimeter bioprosthesis, a little bit stenotic. So the pulmonary hypertension still persists. And uh, she is still now symptomatic. It's very, it's very careful, uh, you know, careful not to put in the smaller bioprothesis. And uh, back to the ring alloplasty. So the 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 theoretically, you know, it's very important to reduce anterior posterior posterior uh, uh, distance, not transverse distance. Uh, the, it's very important to put in the symmetrical and bilateral measured plication here between trigon and P1, trigon P3. So uh, you can see the side selection just Put in the sizer, maybe size of the anterior leaflet, and the mainly height of the anterior leaflet. This so-called the you know the uh, prosthetic suture ring suture begins at the center of P2, and the bilateral trigon uh, left side and right side. This is my routine procedure. And uh, it's very important to put in the ring symmetrically. OK. Oops. What? So this is the result of the last you know, the 20 years, you know, the free freedom from reoperation was 95% freedom from more than, uh, you know, more than uh, secondary, you know, two plus mitral regression, 95% in any type of prost uh, prolapse. So this is the, this is the transesophageal 3D echo recently, 20 years after joining alloplasty. And this was the, this patient underwent mitral repair in 1999 in the P2 quadrangular resection during 29 in the TEE uh, last year. And the ejection fraction 60% without vital recourage or tricuspid recourage. So it's very easy to analyze the motion of the mitral anus or the any type of the ring recently. So now they're using a, using a QLAV and mitral valve navigator. We measure the circumferential length during the cardiac cycle and the mitral area reduction recently. So we are now collecting the 20 years, uh, 20 years, uh, 20 years mitral analysis, you know, with the drain ring now. So you can see. Another one is the, uh, currently I use the so-called CG uh, Callaway, uh, Colvin Galloway, and the partial posterior band also measure the circumference uh, change and 3D area during the cardiac cycle. So it's very easy by using the echocardiography, you know, they not only recurrent or it's your mitral or uh, 
of functional, you know, functional stenosis, but the macho ends motion uh, we can analyze after, uh, soon after mitral valve repair or late after mitral valve repair. So in conclusion, ring selection for mitral valve repair, three types, last 30 years, three types of anoplasty ring were used since 1990. And joint flexible ring and band and the Shuji band. Size selection and implantation technique are crucial in ring anoplasty, as you know. And more than that, the ring anoplasty is essential to obtain excellent result of mitral valve repair. Thank you very much for your attention. Dr. Pun. Thank you very much, Professor, for elaboration so beautiful. But uh, my, I have some comment too because uh, my two or three years back now, I, I changed my mind to the style of using the valve ring. I, I still believe in the mobility of the ventricle, so I changed into the flexible ring, flexible band in, in this last two, two or three years because I I impressed that I, I should leave the valve to move in, instead of using the rigid ring. And also I want to leave the anterior to move as natural as it should be, like Professor Shaw in 20 years ago. However, Professor Shaw that in 20 years ago, if you use a rigid ring, rigid ring, you make, make, can, make, can produce the same result, but uh, the movement of the ventricle is limited compared to the flexible ring. A flexible band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tyler, so, David, comment. In the, uh, the motion is uh, not so different between the flexible ring group and the uh, semi rigid ring after, after one year or two years after surgery, he said. But uh, we, don't have a, we don't have a data anyway. Yeah, for, for the sake of educational part, I think now, especially in Thailand or Southeast Asia, we have a lot of rheumatic cases. And it seems that the suggestion in rheumatic valve repair, we should put in the rigid ring because it's more stabilized or more fixed better compared to flexible ring or flexible band. I'm not quite uh, convinced about that actually. Uh, so, I, yeah, I, I went to many meetings and, and the solution always come to that. What kind of ring is the best? The only, <laughs> the answer is that that's, it depends on that surgeon. It can produce the best result for the patients or not. But however, still today, there's a, a variety of band and ring we have to choose. So do you think that it is really different, flexible, flexible ring or band or rigid is better actually? You know, the, in the, for the patient with a rheumatic mitral valve disease, the valve in the quarter itself are thick and immobile, tend to be immobile. So it's, it's important, I guess, to use a larger one, larger gotcha. one. And the, uh, uh, if possible, you use the, go on the pericardium or something to make a good coaptation surface and then make her to put in the larger ring, I guess. The, in the gentle matter regurge, you know, I, I hope to use the larger one, I guess, because uh, of the, you know, the pans formation in the future, you know, maybe the correct size, not reduce the prostate ring size. You know, it's very important, I guess. Am I right? I, I mean, the rigid, rigid ring or flexible ring is better in, in rheumatic, I'm still not certain. Yeah, rigid ring, I guess, uh, it's very, it's very useful, and of course the Sometimes several types of rigid, semi rigid rings still, uh, you know, we have uh, apply. And the so called now, uh, I, I use the Shuji semi rigid Pasha band, use the so called, no problem, I guess. Which one I can't say. And uh, about the ring or band. It's yeah. better because uh, if we, we all know that we want anterior metal lip, is movement should be left alone because it's not going to dilate. So why we have to put in the complete ring? 
just we didn't just reduce ban in almost every case to let it move on, on mobile better. Why? You know the uh, the reliable structure along the major angles is the trigon trigon. And the, between the trigon, anterior part of trigon trigon, there's only a curtain. There's no no reliable tissue construction. Mm -hmm. So I prefer anyway. Even for even even for the patient with ischemic major regret, just put in the trigon trigon in the posterior band. That's my and that's my uh, that's my uh, preference. Thank you. I think so. Thank you very much. Uh, I have short question. Uh, just that in which condition that you downside the ring, and in which condition that. Uh, do not downside the ring, uh, in your opinion, downsizing of the ring. Downsizing, I, I hate downsizing because of the, uh, you know, the some degree of mitral stenosis developed. You know, um, just it's a correct size. You mean you, and a correct size means so called the half of the length of the posterior leaflet. You know, almost seven millimeter or eight millimeter. Height of the P2 ranges of uh, 15 or 16 millimeter, and also the half of the posterior length of the posterior leaflet, you know, make a cooptation theoretically. What about the uh, ischemic uh, uh, MR? Do you uh, do you downside the ring in ischemic condition? Ah, uh, uh, sometimes I did. But uh, usually, uh, recently, I put in the so-called ologous pericardium, uh, um, posterior leaflet, anterior leaflet, and make a good cooptation surface area, and put in the normal size. OK, thank you very much. And uh, I would like to close this session. Thank you very much.